goes out the window when he gave this drug pin the prior approval for anything that he wrote before it was published. As far as a journalist, that kind of wipes out the integrity of his position. Instead of saying he was getting this article to serve the public good, maybe he was doing it more to glamorize El Chapo or just stroke his ego. That's not a crime, but I and I can't believe I'm about to help her in her argument. <laughs> yeah. There is a way where they can be federally prosecuted, and this is this is what it is. When he came into Mexico or he left Mexico and he was talking to U.S. customs officials, yeah. and they asked him what was the purpose of your trip, as they often do, uh -huh. and he lied, and he yeah. affirmatively lied as to the reason he was there. Then he would have something for lying to a public official. Now, he may have said, I'm there for work, I'm there to do a report. That's okay, but if he lied about the reason he was there, then they can get him. I gotta say something. Right. He does have to be a little bit concerned, because if he is the reason that El Chapo was captured, those are not people that I necessarily want to be on their bad side. Yeah. So on top of all of those concerns that he might have as well, he's got safety concerns, right, Alison, in the sense that there's been people who speculated that El Chapo may well not be happy about the fact that he's now sitting in prison and might well put a hit out. Not an interview I would have wanted to conduct. Well said. Let's move on to the next case. So this is a video where we've got uh, a motorist who's driving along, ostensibly drunk driving, right? He's got this covered up container. He's having a swig. For all intents and purposes, he could well be drunk. The police track him down and arrest him. Was it alcohol in that container? First of all, they still have to prove that he was in fact driving under the influence. They've got to prove that it's alcohol. I have to give credit to the investigators in this case because they didn't just rely on the videotape. They actually used the videotape to track him down, find him on the road, watch his actual erratic driving. They said he was following too close, he was going across the lane. When they stopped him, they checked out the open container. It apparently did contain alcohol because they filed on him for that. They also said that he refused to cooperate with the investigation and they arrested him for driving under the influence. But his attorneys are arguing, hang on, you're completely wrong. He wasn't drunk. Well, they wouldn't have filed on him or charged him with an open container oh, if there wasn't alcohol in that in that container. And now that they actually arrested him and they found the car, they will have that container and the defense will be able to test it I and say whether it is or not. I you in court because I don't, <laughs> from that video alone, that's not enough to prove. That's right. They haven't because the officers were there and they saw it with their own two eyes. They but don't so even need to have it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Thank well, heavens that it wasn't shown to be alcohol. Thank goodness. But if they stopped him, arrested him, found alcohol in that container, yeah. you can't well argue that it was water. Those right. are not the facts of the case so far. That's what they've said. Well, we haven't seen the case, but we've seen the charges. They would not have filed an open container charge unless there was an open container. Right, because prosecutors never, they never charge something that they ultimately can't prove. Let's talk about the, the last case, please, ladies. This is a tragic case that, in fact, made some international headlines. Right. It involves a victim, a woman named Ashley Olsen, who was found dead in Italy. All we know is that she's ended up murdered, strangled. Someone has been arrested now and has admitted to this killing that says it's an accident. It's a tough one to argue your way out of. There were visible marks on her neck. I think he was even found in possession of the victim's phone, cell phone. Right. Uh, it, it seems like a, a very hard one to explain away. Well, I'll tell you, Matt, this case infuriates me. From the get-go, we hear erotic, kinky sex game gone bad. I mean, it seems like over in Italy, anytime they find a young woman naked, dead in her bed, all of a sudden it's considered to be an erotic, kinky sex game without really any evidence showing that. And it seems like the investigators in this case have done all the work for the defense because they keep saying that the victim consented to everything, that the victim let this person into her apartment because there were no signs of break-in. Perhaps she was forced to allow him in, that she consented to the sex because they said there were no signs of struggle. But like you pointed out, she actually had bruises and scratches on her neck. She had two fractures to her school. I mean, those are signs of struggle. And you would think that these <coughs> detectives and these investigators would have learned a lot from the Amanda Knox debacle. And the first thing that we need to know is that the detective in this case is the same detective as the one in Amanda Knox, Meredith Kircher. So that's, that's important to know. But also, they rush out to the media and they immediately start releasing evidence that they then later have to say, oh, that wasn't the case. That didn't right. happen. And so they need to learn to slow down and keep their case quiet until they actually have some proof that somebody committed the crime, and this type of speculation is awful for her family. Yes.
Just very briefly as well, there was some suggestion that drugs may well have played a part in this particular event. Certainly alcohol was a big factor. Is that any defense at all for this guy if he says, listen, I was out of my mind on drugs? Well, sure. I mean, of course, that, that mitigates his, you know, that, that deals with his intent and his state of mind. But again, wait till you actually know what happened in the case before you speak to the media. Well, still many unanswered questions. What we do know is that a young woman was uh, taken far too soon. Ladies, as always, really, really grateful for your insights. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank, Thank you, you. And if you'd like to find out more about Wild About Trial, you can simply visit our website, crimewatchdaily.com.